I need a tale from my native land of Bohemia, which may or may not have been composed by the monk Cosmos, who for me is current Ooh. period. <laughs> In the 14th century. We're not quite sure if Cosmos actually made this up, or if he was actually doing a uh, anthropologic sort of folklore of his collection and, 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 and collected it. But this is the story of the founding of the Czech nation, of the Bohemian nation. The story goes something like this. A long time ago, the Slavic tribe, led by the great leader Krok, came to the land, which they later called Czech, or named themselves after, and named the land Czech. They moved into the land and they were quite happy and prosperous under their leader Krok. But there came a time, as it comes with all leaders, where, where Kruk grew old, and there was no son to take over from him, but these uh, early Slavic peoples were quite egalitarian, and Kruk had three daughters. So they decided to, to decide amongst themselves which of these three daughters would be the leader. Well, the eldest was a great wise woman, was much admired by the people, but she was not a leader. The second daughter was also wise, but she was a witch, well-versed in the ways of lore and love and herbs and potions, and the people that trusted her because of this. But the third daughter, whose name was Labushka, was both beautiful and wise. She was strong and independent, and all the people trusted her for her judgment. And so Croc said unto them, my daughter Labushka tells she'll take over the chieftainship when I am ready to retire. And so it came to pass. Her father, Croc, retired, and Labushka took over the leadership. Well, at that time, the Czech people had much commerce with other people, and there were those in the Czech nation who were not pleased with being led by a woman. And so they grumbled amongst themselves. And it came to pass that one day Labushka was passing judgment upon a case in court between two brothers. It was a land dispute. And she found in favor of the one brother over the other. And the slighted brother smote his staff on the floor of the judgment hall and said, This is what comes of woman's justice. This is what comes of being led by a woman. We are the laughing stock of the nation because we are led by a woman. And Labushka grew wroth, but she also knew that the tide of her political people was turning. And she said unto them, Yes, I am a woman. And you have trusted me before, but if now has come the time where you no longer trust me because of my sex, then I shall take a husband, and he shall be your ruler. And this is how you shall find the husband. And she called forth her messengers, and she called forth her magical white horse. Now you must understand that this white horse was such that the people all said that Labushka gained her power, her great wisdom, from the fact that she would send this horse forth at night. She would ride upon its back and visit the homes of all the people and the minds of all the people and know their thoughts. And that was how she was able to gain the great wisdom that she used in exercising judgment over her people. She said, under the mass of the people, she said, these two messengers shall follow this white horse. This horse shall lead them over the mountains and across the river. And there they shall find a man who will be plowing in a field behind two oxen. They shall approach him, they shall name him Premisil, which is his name, and they will bring him back here to be our king. And all the people thought this was a great, wise, and magical decision, and so they said, let it be so. So Lubushka set forth the messengers following the horse, and they crossed the mountains, and they crossed the river, and surely they saw the man Premisil plowing behind two oxen in the field. And the two messengers approached the man Premisil, and they bowed down before him in the field, and they said, Premisil, we are from the nation of Czech. You are going to be the king of our Lubushka. And he said, of course. And he took the whip that he had in his hand to use to the oxen. He smote it into the ground. He clapped his two hands and the oxen disappeared. The, the whip which he had planted in the ground became a tree, it sprouted. There were three great branches coming from it. He took the pouch upon his waist, he opened it up and he offered the messengers lunch. They said, all right. They sat down, they had lunch. While they were eating lunch, Premisil said to them, you see this tree upon which, under which we are sitting? They said, yes. He said, you see that there are three branches. And as they looked up into the branches, two of the branches withered and died. 
He said, this is my house. This is the future of my house. Two of these branches shall wither and die, but the third shall become strong and shall rule all of this land. The messengers were quite impressed. They took Remisil back with them to the capital city, which was at that time not much of the capital city of Praha, upon the banks of the river of Praha. They took him back, he became Lubushka's husband, and the two of them built the city of Praha as we know it today, the great metropolitan capital that it is, otherwise known as Prague to you English speaking people. And that is the beginning of the Czech nation.